Hey, welcome back. Okay, so remember, it's all about being relaxed. Okay, don't be freaked. We're gonna take our time, enjoy ourselves, and hopefully learn some new skills. It's kind of fun for me as a tutor because being a teacher, I always learn fun new skills doing this sort of thing. All right, now <sighs> it's kind of tricky because obviously, you know, you start in certain areas depending, and I think the best place to start off with is still going to be the feet. And I'm going to start down here. Now I'm going to create one side for the minute. This so easy obviously just to mirror all these and I'm not going to worry about things like you know um, pivot points and things. We can worry, worry about those later on. What we need to do really is just start setting our shapes up. Now we want to keep the quads as much as possible I'm going to find that quite important, especially the modelling side of things. Um, triangles and things are fine for hard surface, okay, because we don't really need to deform them, but we don't have that luxury here. Okay, now I just hit F4 there, just in case you're wondering. And I'm not creating this to any particular scale. This is roughly the size of the uh, foot of the minion. And what I'm going to do is just convert to Edible Poly. I'm not going to name it yet. What I want to do first is just start breaking it up. Now you'll notice I've got my graphite tools along the top here. Tools I'm going to use quite a lot of are things like Swift Loop, which is madly useful. That way I can just kind of grab it here in the middle and here. Okay, now what I can do is just get this edge control select by ring, control select by poly, delete that, now I've got two parts and then just grab here and cap okay bring this down, now this is going to be the left foot, now you're going to be looking at your body a lot, I know okay before we start that this guy here is not the same shape as you that we're going to be creating. Okay, but fundamentally the physiology is going to be the same. And we're going to be referring to physiology quite a bit, pulling up pictures on Google image search, all sorts of things. So first of all, look at the shape of the foot. So this is where the big toe is going to be, just here. Okay, so we bring it in slightly more on this side compared to the other side. You'll notice I'm working in edge mode here. And we're going to bring just this line in here, like that, to simulate the top of the shoe, like that. Okay, and how it kind of curves around. And then this here, obviously, is the actual shoe itself at the back. Now then, it has a sole as well, but we're not going to uh, get too concerned about that until we actually come to modeling the shoe itself. Now, the reason that I've built these this way, and I'll just detach this part now, is because whilst we don't have toes for these guys, we just have shoes, we do still Obviously, when we're wearing our shoes, they flex upwards and downwards like that with our feet inside them, yeah? So because of this, we obviously want a degree of flexibility in the shoe. Okay, and that's kind of the toe area that flexes like this. Alright, the uh, upper bridge doesn't. So there's a bit too much flexibility in this already, so let's break this down now into three parts. So what I'm going to do is just select this edge, just give it a quick loop, chamfer it, and I'm going to select here, control select by ring, control select by polygon, delete, and then just cap here. Alright, so now we've broken this down, and what I'm going to do is just detach this part, just here. So, select it, and just attach it as an object. Okay, so now, obviously we can make the toe go up or down, 
which is useful for when he's kind of coming down heavily on his foot or whatever. He can stand on his toes, things like that. This part here, not going to bend, I would imagine. So what we could do is just fix these parts together to show that they're not going to bend, which is easy enough. So I'll attach these two parts instead. And go into poly mode, go here and here. And just bridge them together again. like so. And then I can even get rid of those if I want to. But, you know, I think that's okay. Maybe I'm going to narrow it a little bit more at the back here, just to show that that's the kind of shape of the foot. So, again, we're taking a lot of thinking. We're looking at, you know, take your shoe off the floor. Have a look at it. Seriously. Have a look at the shape of your shoe. It's a lot more complicated than you think. Okay, just going to round it slightly at the back here. All right, and here and here, I'm going to bring these up a little bit. And just going to slowly slope this down until we get to the toe section, like so. All right, and that gives us our basic first part, which is this. And we can narrow it more if we want to. We can use FFDs or whatever. But we'll come back to it, okay? Because, like I say, we're at the minute just fleshing out the physiology for this. Now, the question you're going to have to ask yourself at the minute is, for your bones, are you going to want to use cylinders or boxes? You want to use boxes. They're more efficient. So what we're going to do is grab another box using auto grid and this is going to become our lower leg now again look at your lower leg okay if you've got a mirror in your room this is going to help later as well but have a look at your leg now we know in relation to the minion that they have stubbly little legs okay and the leg bones are narrower than the actual width of the foot but only slightly so that is going to be our first leg bone, just there. And then if we shift and drag it, that will be our second leg bone. Now, I know these look ridiculously small. However, it's because they are. Basically, it's about as simple as that. They are small. Now, if I drag this across to here, this is going to become our pelvis. So, just uh, going to right click. Convert it to an edible poly. That way I can change its shape a bit. And what I'm going to do is just grab here. And just bring this forward a bit like that. Now remember, this is technically a thigh. Okay, coming on to here. So we can convert this to an edible poly as well. Just pretend, if you're more used to mechanical modeling, that's fine because basically you can pretend that's what you're doing if you'd like. Okay, but this is going to come up like this, and then just extrude that up a little bit like that, and maybe bring this one down a little bit. Okay, because all we're trying to do is replicate, in a way, the very most, the most basic kind of muscle and bone. We're kind of combining the two. We're not putting. Whereas with mechanical stuff, we'd be messing around trying to show how we're like making mechanical parts work and trying to give an illusion of how they're going to work. In this we're giving an illusion that we have an underlying physiology if we even don't. Okay, and I'm going to extrude these parts out too. Now, don't worry that they're intersecting at the minute. Okay, that's not a concern. What I'm doing at the moment is just getting these to kind of come over. You'll notice the hip doesn't come all the way at the edge. They don't. I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. There we go. Now at this point it's going to be a good idea to throw up our internet. Here we go. And I'll just stop it loading 3D Palace. I'm going images.google.com Okay, and we can look at hip bone. Okay, and this will give you an idea of how the hip bone looks in relation to 
you know, the other bones of the body. Now, what I'm going to do is drag that over to the other side. Uh, we don't need to get the shape of the hip bone exactly correct as long as it's marginally correct. Yeah. Bring these up. Don't worry that it's not doing the same thing on this side. We'll get there. And we want to keep the width here a little bit wider because we're going into the base, obviously, of our little dude. Bring this across here. And what I'm going to do is just do a quick ring and a quick connect. And then I can harvest off this side here and throw a symmetry onto it. Like so. Okay, so now you can see that we have this kind of underlying part here and this part here. Now, we have to start designing things like their asses and stuff. I know that sounds like a mad thing to be doing considering, but pin the stack and I'm going to go over here and show end result. You don't even have to pin the stack really. And grab here because we need to give slightly more bulge in certain areas. Yeah? And here. I mean, this is obviously important as well if we're like looking at this model from the back. I should also point out that whilst this is representative of a minion from the film Despicable Me, which is a fun, fun comedy, it is not an actual minion from the film Despicable Me, which is a fun, fun comedy, because I don't want to be sued to death. I'm just trying to show people how to make an animated piece based on this sort of idea. Okay, so now you're getting the rough idea. We've got this kind of shape here for the bum at the back. Um, at the front here, I mean, these are non-sexualized characters, so you don't have to worry about like putting massive packages at the front, you know what I mean? We're just rounding the shape here, that's the important part. Okay. Just looking at this. These legs are still a little bit too long, believe it or not. So, what I'm going to do is just bring this down a little bit. This is a non-uniform scale, so be wary. Okay, bring those down to there. And then I can bring this down. Now, of course, when you've done a non-uniform scale, which I just did, you're then going to go and reset X form because we will be linking these things together soon right click convert to editable polygon okay now this foot too big way too big compared to the rest of the body so I'm gonna scale it in and just rotate it out a little bit We don't really need to do a reset X form on the foot because it's in the uh it's been uniformly scaled, it hasn't been non uniformly scaled. Okay, bring this down. Let's plop that there. Okay, so now you'll see that, that leg's more or less kind of coming to the right size. Now the legs actually come in a lot more towards the middle, so let's just scale this completely. All at the same time. The hip bone's actually massive. I'm gonna make sure this is coming down to the floor. And then bring that down on top. Okay, and now we've got there, that's much more like the actual shape that it kind of comes out to. The legs are quite little and they just stick out the bottom, so I might bring these in a little bit more. There we are. I might narrow these a little bit as well, actually. Let's reset the X form on these again, because it was non-uniform. 
It's all about tweaks. You're just going to keep tweaking it until you get something you're happy with. Now remember, we haven't even started, obviously, building the skin of this thing yet. There we are. There. Okay, teeny little leg sticking out the bottom. Teeny little feet sticking out the bottom. Now we're going to make a small minion. We're not going to make a tall one, but generally the principles are going to remain the same no matter what we do. So what I'm going to do is collapse this. So it's now obviously just one editable polygon. And I'm going to grab these little polygons here, shift and drag them, and clone them as an object. Now if I select all the polygons, and just scale them flat, like that, and then I'm going to scale them this way a little bit, like that. And then I'm going to grab these edges, and bring those in. Like so. Now, we don't want this kind of flat area here at the front. So, what I'm going to do is make it a more rounded shape by bringing those out to about there. And then I can take this edge here. Be very careful. We don't want a sharp edge. We just want it slightly rounded. Like that. All right. And I'm going to just uh, center my pivot to make it a little bit easy to manipulate my model. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that down like so. This is going to become, obviously, our body. Let's bring that down a teeny bit like so. And to cap it, well, rather than just clicking cap, what I'm going to do is just bridge. So I'm going to click out, make sure nothing's selected, just use my interactive bridging tool. Like so. Okay. Now I can... The good thing is, you see, I can start kind of messing around with the shape a bit once I've uh, duplicated these a few times. Now, if we consider the top of our little guy's head is going to be here, this is where his neck's going to be. So I'm going to make Hang on. Cancel that. I'm going to make just a couple of these. Maybe, you know, two more. Okay, and that's going to manage going up to his shoulders, more or less, because his arms are going to come out here. For the bottom one, I'm going to bring these down a little bit like that. Now, if his arms... And I'm looking at the width here. It's not too fat, is he? No, it doesn't seem to be. He's still got that tubular shape going on. I like the way his legs obviously won't be able to hold his weight at all. I'll move his feet back a little bit as well. There we go. So they're underneath his belly. That's a more logical center of balance. Again, bringing this back and just looking at the shape. That's where the arm's going to come off here. So his neck's then going to come in here. So I'm going to make a copy of this one. And then bring it in just a teeny bit. Just on two axes, not on three. And then... for his head, which will be this part. Just curving it in at the top. And slightly out. Gives us, you can see that's where the rounded shapes kind of start to take off from. I'm going to move these up a bit because these are the top of the head. Okay, and it seems to be bulging okay, so that's good. And now we can have definition for where the shoulders are, so this is where his arms are going to come out of, just here. So what I'm going to do is make a box to represent his arms. Again. Again. 
I'll just pull it out like so. It's got very thin arms. And it's kind of a 50-50 proportion for his arms to elbows. Now there's no actual um, shoulder blades. They literally kind of sink in to the rest of the model. So round about here. Um, I'm going to assume that they have some sort of a shrug mechanism, however, so I'm going to make this the shoulders here, and that then I'm going to basically build these into a kind of shoulder system, okay, just so that we do have one. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the length of this. Because the arms actually come all the way down to the floor. Okay, that's about right. Now I'm going to just shift and drag this down to here. Okay, I'm going to make these a little bit less. I'm going to keep these measurements the same, however. Okay, and then I can just kind of stick them together like this because we need to make our fingers, which <laughs> are of course going to be massively complicated compared to everything else. Okay, now on studying this, this has one thumb and two fingers. So take your hand in front of your face, put your little finger and your ring finger away. Okay, so you've just got your thumb, your index, and your middle finger. Um, making basically a W shape sort of thing. Okay, now imagine, take a pencil or a pen or even just cover it with the other hand and cover the two fingers that are folded back just so that you're looking at these, okay? And imagine how they're going to work. Now, your two fingers obviously make a V shape and your thumb is set much, much further back. So let's have a look at the physiology of how these sorts of things are set up. So again, this is a job for Google Image Search and we want our hand bones. Let's just find any image. There we go. Drag it across. So, we don't have to create anything this complex, okay? This is still quite a simple character. But it has to have flexibility. We have to be able to independently move our thumb. Okay, so you see here we've got you may be obviously aware that you have like two bendy parts in your thumb, but you've also got this part which flexes your thumb backwards and forwards and meets at the base of your other fingers. And your other fingers obviously have these too. These are the parts you think of as your knuckles, and these are the parts here that you think of as the bendy parts of your fingers, yeah? So your finger, we've got the three joints here that meet down here where the carpal bones will hang out, yeah? And then it's going to connect to your ulna and your radius. Now, we're going to emulate that to a degree down here. So again, using a box, we're going to start off and make the fingers. Now these are chunky, fatty fingers. So let's make it bigger than we need to at first, and then we can kind of come off from there. Okay, start here. Okay, and we want to create, these are chunky fingers, remember what I said. Okay, so we're going to create our two chunky fingers first. And then a longer one comes back here. This longer one, obviously, is our hand itself. Yeah, this forms the kind of big flat area opposite the palm. Look at your palm, turn it over, that's where that bone is, yeah? Drag it again. If you understand how to make a machine, you'll understand how to do this. Honestly, it's not hard. Modeling an accurate human hand, yeah, that's hard. Doing this, nah. Okay, and here. So there's two of our fingers, and now we just need the thumb. And the thumb, look at your hand. Hold it in front of your face, sideways on. Your thumb is now hanging down into your face, isn't it? We know it is. Now you're looking at this as your left hand, I hope. Okay, so these two fingers that you're looking at now, 
top down, your left hand in front of your face, look where your thumb is, okay? Your thumb should automatically make a kind of crook shape anyway, okay? The three bones that kind of denote its position and everything making a crook shape. So let's uh, emulate that, just going to shift that to there and remember it's slightly lower down so bring that down like that this is very much a fiddling kind of thing but once you get it in the right position things become a lot easier Just remember that all these bones and things all meet up. The only difference being, okay, that again, I'll pull out this image here. One, see, tiny fingertip, one, two, three, tiny fingertip, one, two, okay. This little bone here presumably was this big one at one point. Leave enough space between these things that I can do this sort of thing. I'm going to change this now to my local viewport and just do that. And then I'm going to move it in local as well. Okay, so again, you can now see this is curving underneath like that. We want to curve these fingers slightly. Before we do that, we're going to have to move the pivots on all these. So, if we go to our pivot point effect, go here, start moving our pivots back a bit. And again here. And remember, the application of this is not just for film. This is the same application of skills as can be used, obviously, in game. Now, obviously, in game dev, a lot more games are more likely to use things like biped and stuff like that. The only reason I'm not using it is because I want to show you how we're going to create our body chassis, as it were. Again, bring this one up and this one up. Reason being it makes it so much easier for us to position these things, yeah? Like ridiculously so in fact. Now we're going to bend these ones down a little bit like that and temporarily select and link Reason being now, if I go back to select and move, I can start moving these into a more relaxed pose. Okay, which makes things a little bit easier for us. Because it's got chunky fingers. I did point that out, didn't I? Okay, so chunky fingers. Right, now, select this all, and I'm going to unlink it all again. That's important. And over here where these two guys are, I'm just going to shift and drag these back. Now you'll notice they both moved together there, because I've still got it on local on, so they moved into a good position. Okay, so I'm going to turn this into a single bone now. So, just come on over here. Bring that back to there. And what I'm going to do, is attach this fellow. I'm going to bridge here and here. Okay, now, where these two wonky old lines are, here and here, I'm going to do a quick ring, uh, sorry, a quick loop, and then do a backspace, that'll get rid of those. And then I can get rid of these, doing a backspace, and that leaves me this, which becomes our palm. 
Now we've got our palm, if I grab here, shift back, clone to object, there we go. This becomes our wrist. Cap that. Okay, and now we have something that we can connect onto our hand our wrist rather, and as you can see it's a nice quite big, quite chunky looking hand yeah, maybe not wide enough yet, but we can widen it, that's not a problem just make sure it's turned off local when we do this bit we could even use an FFD just change this to uh, there we go Okay, like that. And I'm just going to reset it again. Okay, and zoom in. Right, now we need to start changing the shape somewhat because obviously it starts to arch a little bit on these. So I'm going to go through here and just do a quick ring and a quick connect. Grab this and drag it up. And then over here, same again. And just drag it up. Alright, now we just have to fit the hand onto this, which isn't particularly difficult. Just going to make sure we can rotate it without it breaking. Still in local, so we'll change this to view. That's better. And we're going to tuck the fingers slightly underneath itself anyway, so what I'm going to do is take this part, which is our wrist obviously, move that to there, because this should be the more natural position for this. Make sure it's not intersecting. There we go, let's move that up to there. Not madly important, it's just going to make it slightly easier for us when we come to putting it all together. Now in the front viewport, obviously I can get a better idea of size and scale. I'm just going to bring this down. That's the right width, surprisingly enough, so that's good. Okay, now here, I'm going to change this to local. Just want to bring this back a teeny bit to there. Now I'm going to bring this over to here and rotate it slightly again. That way we were developing its kind of natural pose, remember I was mentioning this. We're still in local, so I'll change this back to view. Okay. Now we need to move these arms up and out slightly. this to view. Okay, and that's how we end up with that. Now, this isn't actually going to be part of the skeleton. This is only here for my reference, alright? Just in case you're wondering. The actual skeleton itself is here. Okay, Things like the head moving and stuff like that we can do with morph targets. I'm going to hide this for the moment. This is the important stuff. Now this is where the shoulders are going to be. So What I want to do is... I'll use a swift loop. Into there. 
Like I say, this will allow us to shrug shoulders and things like that. And now I'm going to kill this part of the polygon. Cap this one. Take the ring here and just get rid of it. Okay, and just cap there. Now, if we wanted to breathe, like in and out and in and out, what we can do as well is we can separate these bones here so that we have, you know, the front and the rear bones in separation. That way we can push forward and push out, push forward and push out, so we can give the impression of heavy breathing and stuff. This really is something you need to decide on, though, before you decide... You know, this is kind of in the story section where you're deciding whether or not your character's going to be breathing heavily or doing anything else along these lines. Hmm. Cold coffee. Fantastic. Okay, now let's detach this section. That gives us those ones. Ooh. Now, our little foot here at the moment needs to be spread it out a little bit as well so I'm going to move our foot to over here slightly and then put this hip here into a natural pose there we go and just for the sheer benefit of the doubt what I'm going to do is uh, just ring that and then do a connect and a small chamfer then a quick ring and delete that and then grab here and here and then I can separate off this part so detach okay and if this is going to be the stomach then fine. Now, at the back here where these shoulders are, because this is a shoulder, shoulders tend to come back slightly more and make a more shouldery kind of shape. Remember, we're not having to go mad here with the old physiology bit, but we do want to get a rough shape. So, that would be there. And Maybe a little bit of height there as well. Okay, so that's our shoulder join. Okay, now we can duplicate all this lot. So, front viewport zoom. I'm going to turn my grid off, just for the moment. And start mirroring, mirror, using this tool, and copy. And I'm just going to drag it across to here. Now, because I've done that, I'm going to reset the X form because they're all inside out. Convert to edible poly. And then I'm going to take each one of these pieces here and just flip it. So control A, flip. And just do them all. It won't take you a minute. I'm just hitting control A to make sure I've got all the elements. You can just do a marquee drag if you prefer. Now these ones, remember I want to get the shoulder blade as well. Okay, now something I probably should have done is named these parts before I duplicated them, but sod it, basically. So I'm going to drag these across, make sure they're all lining up. There we are. And again, make them go black. Okay, and again. Now, the good thing, really, about this sort of character is that there's no real muscle flex, yeah? Um, except in the most comedic of situations, there's going to be very little flexing and bulging and stuff like that going on simply because these things don't have much muscle they're not physiologically accurate however 
It might not hurt if we have a look at that later on, so if there's time we will have a look at how to make a little bit of bulge. It might come in funny and handy anyway for the stomach, you know. So just going down here, only a couple more left to go. Do this one. Two left. And then I've just got to make symmetrical the old uh, top part there, and we're done. Let's have a look. So, here it is. I don't know why I've actually filled in the polygon on this, so I'll stick symmetry on instead. There it is. And just collapse it. Okay, so as you can see now we have our little guy, or at least his skeleton, just about ready to roll. Head and all. And as you can see, it's actually approximating the shape now of what we were after. Um the arms are quite far forward. I'm just gonna have a quick look at this. And if you look, they are actually in the middle. They're not set back or set forward. Our, one, our arms are actually set forward slightly because obviously we descend from apes or God, depending on who you, uh, which book you decide to read. Um, so we're going to keep these in the middle and we're not going to make them any bigger at the top. The good thing is though that we can make these shoulders kind of go up and down. Now, what we want to do is look at naming conventions for these. Now remember, this side's left and it's all rig, okay? So this is all rig. So everything we start off with should be rig underscore. So make a copy of that, control X, control V. See? So now you know what it is. And this is going to be rig L for left, foot, because that's what it is, rear. R foot rear L foot toe Can you guess what this one is? R foot toe That's right Pelvis L thigh L leg Remember, use names that make sense otherwise you're not going to know what these are. This is important now. R thigh R leg Didn't put the first bit in. There we go. Make sure that's all right. See? Okay, so that's easy enough. We've done the bottom part. Now we'll do here. Rig Spine 1. This will be Rig Spine 2. And then this will be rig and then what do we call this part here on the front of our bodies I can't remember what it is I'll call it spine 3 it'll come to me though in a minute this is rig left shoulder and this is rig right shoulder
Good thing is that we can like cycle our things. We can see like our axis of movement already. So when we set up our limitations on movement, it's going to be a lot easier. Now this is going to be our rig stomach. Okay, which will connect directly to this one. And it's quite good because we can make it bobble up and down when it jumps. I mean, just adding flex to that will make a whole world of hilarity. Okay, uh, this is going to be our upper arm and this is going to be rig right upper arm lower arm you don't have to use caps by the way and you can use anything really you know you don't have to label it but you're going to because it makes sense Now we have these parts of the wrist, okay, so this is rig, left, arm, to wrist. See see how I used kind of text chat there to shorten the word to, which is to or, to the number two. Rig, right, arm, to wrist. So that means this is our wrist. Oops, wrong one. And this one. Okay, now we have to do these. Which are our fingers. So that's going to be finger one, that's finger two, that's thumb, yeah? So let's make a kind of a short code for what these are. So rig. L thumb one rig L thumb two is the next one and then here finger one one remember what I said this one will be finger one, two. And this will be finger one, three. Okay, so make sure that these are all... You see, I didn't put an L in here. These have got to be named correctly. Make sure the L's in there. This is finger two. too many spaces in there. It doesn't matter, but it uh, makes it tidier. That's the second finger too. And that's the third joint on finger two. Okay. Note we still haven't obviously moved our pivot points. We're going to move those in the next section. And by doing this, we'll slowly start to take control of our model and see exactly what it's going to be doing. Again, over to this one, remember, thumb. R, thumb, one. See, L thumb one. Because if you don't do this, then later down the line you're going to see little models knocking around when you do your uh, list which you get by pressing H. Okay, so let's say you've got this here. Okay, at the minute these ones that say box and stuff, we don't know what they are. Everything else though has a name, well, except object, but they're part of the head dummy at the minute and they're not important. So you see everything's got a name, we know what it is. You want to find the stomach? There it is. And you can find it by typing in the word stomach. Yeah. In a minute, we'll also assign this to a layer, which will also be useful. Anyway. Right. Finger one, one. In fact, I can now copy this. Finger one, two. Finger 
Bring a one three. Copy this part. Finger two one. <coughs> finger two two now. And then finger two three. Okay, so aside from these parts here, okay, which are head, and I'm just going to put rig head for these. Uh, let me see, that's five. So this one's four. Because it will come in handy for making the head twist and stuff, I suppose. Three, two, one. Okay, so now if we go into H, you can see that everything is named. Not linked, but named. Okay, and we have the kind of rough, shuffly, shambly shape of this guy, which I really quite like. Alright, so, next part we'll start by uh, basically moving all the pivots and rigging it together. Well, not rigging it together, but linking it together, yeah? So until then, see you in the next bit. Bye-bye for now.